The street in my town is the street of dreams, Broadway, where fantasy is reality. You disgust me. I've had enough of your filthy mouth. Shut up! Make me. Ooh. You stupid bastard. Read the script, darling. I'm supposed to slap you in this scene. Cut! 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 Take five, everybody. Okay, when we come back, we'll be in Act 3, Scene 4. Alvin, that was completely uncalled for. This is a rehearsal, for God's sake. Linda, are you all right? I'm fine. Calvin has always had a problem separating fantasy from reality. I will never work with him again. Oh, that's just like you, Linda. You're a quitter. You walk out on plays, and you walk out on me! Calvin, listen to me. I'll talk to her. Go to your room and study your lines. It's all right. What are you looking at? Pamela, let's uh, get the actors ready for the next scene. Countdown was about to open. A much ballyhooed Broadway drama starring the legendary husband-wife team of Calvin Forbes and Linda Fortunato. Calvin and Linda were famous for their critically acclaimed performances and infamous for their multiple stormy marriages. But their most memorable scenes weren't played on the stage. They were played in the privacy of their bedroom. There's a fine line between love and hate. And one night, while Calvin was learning his lines, that line was crossed. Damn it, Beverly Jude. I give. I give. I give. As the final curtain fell on Calvin, the first act of Countdown to Murder began. Between marriages to Calvin, Linda rehearsed her love scenes with yours truly. And I can tell you this, the stage wasn't the only place Linda was great. I must have been out of my mind when I thought I could work with this psycho again. Here, work on this. Can you get out of your contract? If I walk from this show, no producer will touch me. I know what my reputation is. I'm undependable. I'm temperamental. Don't I'm forget. unreliable. Yes, and don't forget bitch. That goes without saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the bitches. Mm. I should have married you when I had the chance. When you had the chance, you were still messing around with Calvin. I should have never married him the second time. So tell me, mm. what was he like in the sack? Well, I didn't marry him for his money. <laughs> Enough about Calvin. About us, pussycat, huh? This, uh, dress rehearsal or opening night? Oh, this is an overdressed rehearsal. Hmm? Mike, it's Skip. Open up. Skip? The paper boy? He's a friend of mine. Ex-friend. Oh. Save my seat. What the hell's going on? Where is she? Who? It's not a social call, Mike. Linda Fortunato? Yes. You're under arrest for the murder of Calvin Forbes. You're going to have to come downtown. Is that your coat? Want to get it? What's it all about? You got a warrant? Can he do this? So much for a quiet, romantic evening at home. My date had just been recast from leading lady to prime suspect. 
While the wheels of justice turned at their usual glacial pace, I couldn't help but thinking the unthinkable. Did she do it? My heart said no, but my head said maybe. For Linda's sake, I told my head to shut up. Skip, I gotta talk to you. I've been cooling my heels for an hour now. What the hell is going on? I'm fucking her. Hey, could you ask her mind? She, she couldn't have done it. She was at my place. She was at your place at nine. Not now. The coroner says the ham was canned between six and eight. So I'm the alibi. Well, I'm sorry to burst your bubble, Romeo, but she bashed in his brains with Calvin's American Drama Award. Her prints are all over it. Won't talk to her. Mike, it's late. I got three hours of paperwork. So will I talk, you write. <sighs> you know, sometimes you can be a real pain. Hey, you busted my day. What does that make you? No long-distance calls. Who am I going to call? Who knows? Probably your bookie in Vegas. Hey, Sparky. Oh, Mike. I didn't do it, Mike. Are you OK? Well, that's a stupid question. Right, just <sighs> sit down. Now, listen, I want you to know something. I am going to do everything I can to get you out of this. Oh, can I have one of those? Thanks. I thought you quit. Oh, damn it. I didn't do it, Mike. Were you at his place earlier today? I don't even know where he lives. Lived. I saw Calvin at rehearsals, and only at rehearsals. Well, explain this. Your prints are all over the murder weapon. I can't explain that. Oh, Mike, you gotta believe me. I didn't do it, Mike. Why did you slap Calvin? Because he slapped me. He's a misogynist. Does he just hate you, or does he hate all women? Both. And boy, did I ever hate him. Oh, that is going to sound just great in court. Mike, I didn't hate him enough to kill him. Linda, for the past 10 years, the press had a field day with you two. Stories of public brawls, ashtrays thrown in public restaurants. You even forced a plane to land once in All Chicago. All right. Mike, if I'm guilty of anything, it's hyperbole. I didn't kill him. All right. All right. Listen. I remember a night at your place. I think it was after your first divorce. You actually told me you wanted to see the bastard dead. Oh, baby, you got to believe me. Just wake up a judge and have bail set. I would like her on the stage by the time the play opens. I'm sorry, but play or no play, I'm not releasing her. Why are you doing that, Captain? Explain it to me, please. Why are you being so obstinate? Deputy Mayor, I'm not in the habit of bending the rules. Yeah. That's a bunch of crap. You can help me out this one time. You can bend it a little bit to help me out. You know, Mr. Lawrence, I think you're taking this a little too personally. Uh. Captain, I chair the Mayor's Broadway Revitalization Committee. Linda Fortunato is our spokesperson. Now, you're embarrassing me. As if you needed help. What happened, Barry? Your prom date stand you up? I ought to stand you up in front of a firing squad. What is he doing here? Linda was at his apartment. That's where we tracked her down. And I thought she had taste. Leave her in jail. Mary, when can I get her out of here? We open in two days. She's my star. I have to have her. Marty, we're going to handle this. Don't worry. Can I see her at least? Who's Marty, your brother Penguin? It's Martin Quine. You don't know him. He's a man of culture. The producer or director or something. He also happens to be a friend of mine. Now, find the murderer of Calvin Forbes. When this hits the papers tomorrow, my ass is going to be on the line. I doubt it, Barry. They only write the news that's fit to print. We need a new court jester. This one's not funny. And find the real murderer and stop bothering Linda Fortunato. I can't believe it. Are you on my side? Never. Look, both of you. Now, all the evidence points to her. I'm not releasing our number one suspect, no matter who she's dating or who she knows at City Hall. You can get her out on a bond. Quine will write the check. If she's not on that stage by opening night, you're going to be pounding a beat to Staten Island. Do it fast. Do it quietly. Well, you heard the man. Do what he says. I'll think about it. Now, take a hike, Mike. I'm not in the mood. Linda might not have been the girl next door, but she was no killer either. I'd known her on and off, but mostly off, for over a decade. 
We'd met at Sardi's. She was freshly divorced from Calvin, and I was thirsty. We woke up in each other's arms with dry mouths and stiff joints. Linda was incredible, but unpredictable. A month later, she remarried Calvin, only to divorce him the following year. It's lucky for Calvin he was dead. She might have married him a third time. You're up early. <sighs> up late. Linda Fortunato was arrested last night. For what? Murder. She didn't kill Calvin Forbes, did she? Well, the cops think she did. Well, I can't say I'm surprised. Yeah, well, then don't say anything. I'm trying to get her off. Oh, come on, Mike. Everybody knows that Linda and Calvin fought all the time. It's why they split up, isn't it? Hey, she married him twice. There must have been something there. Well, I saw their last play together. Sunrise came early. And they had to shut the show down because Linda and Calvin wouldn't talk to each other, even on stage. Well, no, I know it looks bad, but I still don't think she did it. I'm sorry I'm late. I overslept. Karaoke night. Don't mind him. He's just crabby because he didn't get any sleep and his girlfriend's a murderer. Is it true about Linda? Because she's all over the news. Well, it's true she was arrested. But there's something that wasn't in the news. Deputy Mayor Lawrence had her released. Why? That's a good question. I don't know. Maybe he's got money in the show. In any event, we got work to do. Belda, let the machine take the calls. Nick, I want you to check out Gayla Gaston. She's Linda's understudy. Now, I've been told they're friends, so she should be cooperative. You got it, Mike. What do you want me to do? First of all, change those shoes. Those sneakers look funny. Now, the theater's business manager is a guy named Jimmy Norton. Linda tells me he's got a thing for young girls, so dummy up a resume and see what you can get from it. I'll be at the theater. At 9 in the morning? I've got some lines to learn. Theater is the art of illusion, and it takes talent to make the unreal seem real. Thanks to producer Martin Quine's pull at City Hall, Linda was out on bail. I went to the theater to see her and hopefully reel in the real killer. You disgust me. I am sick of your filthy mouth. Shut up! Make me. <clears throat> Sweetheart, are you swatting flies or you hitting me? I was afraid to hit you. Well, for Christ's sake, don't hit me. But we have an audience here. They have to believe, sweetheart. This isn't the radio, honey. Martin. I'm sorry. Martin, can I have? It's okay, honey. Can I have a word with you, Ms. Martin? Fortunato, I'm sorry. That's fine, honey. Martin, you can't be serious about this child. It's bad enough. The script is pathetic. I ain't gonna. But I am going to look like Grandma Moses standing next to that Cub Scout. Logan is a fine actor, Linda. He's be perfect. Hey, you worry about you. He is playing my husband. We're not doing Harold and Maude, Martin. Shakespeare once said, all the world's a stage. And at this stage of my investigation, I had nothing to go on. I was hoping Linda could cast some light. Excuse me, where can I find Linda Fortunato? I hate my life. It was obvious the playwright hated Linda. Maybe enough to frame her for Calvin's murder. As opening night approached, nerves were on edge. But there was one this character in my cast of suspects who seemed to stand unruffled in the center of the cyclone, unaffected by Calvin's death or Linda's temperament, the producer, Martin Quine. Hey, Marty. Marty? Oh, right. You're uh, Hammer, the uh, private eye we met at the police station. You got it. Listen, I'm looking for Linda Fortunato. She's at Tantrum Central. Tantrum Central? Give it to me in English. I don't speak Latin. Our dressing room. Ah, thanks. Uh, oh, where is it? It's straight up. Yeah. Uh, one other thing. How long have you known Deputy Mayor Lawrence? Oh, we just met at the uh, Broadway Revitalization Committee. Oh. Doesn't hurt to have friends in high places. He's helped me enormously. I know what you mean. He's helped me enormously, too. Thanks, Marty. Do you understand? As I searched backstage for Linda, Linda caught a stage hand on a surge of his own. Do you understand? These are my favorite underpants. They're not for you. They're mine. Do you understand me? What's the matter? This pervert is trying to steal my underpants. I hope you found something that fits. Be right back. 
Every guy's got one woman in his past who made him crazy. Men just seem to make everybody crazy. How did this happen to me? Last night I was sitting on my sofa waiting to get into Linda's drawers, and now I was slugging it out with the stage Anne who was going through her drawers. I don't blame women, but let's face it, men are guilty too. It's all about who's bigger. Talk about theater of the absurd. While a killer walked the streets, I was in a sword fight with a sword fish. This is why I go to the movies. I always wanted to do that. Huh. You got your lemon? My matinee at the theater gave me nothing, so I went fishing at the crime scene, Calvin's Upper West Side Bachelor Pad. First time I paid a scalper to see an actor's apartment. I was hoping my cash would buy me a clue. Hopes and dreams are what actors live on, and for Calvin, they came true. He won all the top awards for playing Ordinary Joes. But when was the last time an Ordinary Joe got to thank members of the Academy? <laughs> what do you think you're doing? Who are you? 53C. You don't look it. I'm a 42 regular. Cute. And you are? My camera, I'm a private investigator. Who are you working for? Linda Fortunato. Ah, uh, figures. You know, you should have come and talked to me first. Really? Uh-huh. I found the body. Yeah? Mm-hmm. In there? Mm-hmm. Want to show me? Sure. Right here. What were you doing in here? Snooping. And you want to know something? I don't think Linda did it. Really? Why not? Calvin. What about him? <laughs> he hit on anything that moved. That Goomba had women up here day and night. And I never saw Linda once. And I see everything. You must be very security conscious. Mm-hmm, and nosy. By the way, he... oh. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm so embarrassed. You can't be too careful these days. <laughs> Gummy bears. Uh, I shouldn't be eating these things, but I just can't help myself, you know? They're just so squishy. <laughs> uh -huh. What do you got there? A loose screw. Really? While I was at the crime scene, Valda was undercover with Jimmy Norton, and Martin Quine's bean counter, who wanted Valda under the covers. See, this agent took me here. Yeah, well, hey, look, you know, you want to be an actress, you got to get some pictures. I can set you up with a photographer. I know everybody. Well, oh, I don't really know what I'm doing. You know, this was all my sister's idea. I haven't been on stage since high school graduation. High school graduate. You got beauty and brains. <laughs> How long did you work with Marty Quine? Years. You want something to drink? Let's have something to drink, huh? Let's loosen up. I'll have a soda pop. With a cherry on the top. Oh, yeah, definitely with the cherry. Waitress, give me a scotch back with water and uh, sort of pop with fruit for the lady, huh? <laughs> Wilma, you are new in town. Watch out for the sharks. Oh, you'll look out for me, though, won't you, Jimmy? Oh, you betcha I will. <clears throat> so? How'd you hook up with Marty? I only met him the once, but, you know, he seemed brilliant. Yeah, well, Marty's a smart guy. I actually discovered him, you know that? Yeah, in St. Louis. He was doing dinner theater. Small potato stuff. He worked for you? Yeah, well, at first. You know, actually, Wilma, I'm a bean counter guy, you know? I don't care for the spotlight. Now, Marty, he's an upfront guy, you know? So now we're partners. Yeah, but you raised the money. I mean, that's gotta be hard. Not if you're good. And baby, 
I'm the best. Oh, I don't understand about money or anything like that. I mean, I would think it would take thousands to put on a play like Countdown. Millions. That'd be more. <laughs> you see, the money doesn't all come from one place, though. Yeah, I get a dentist who wants to hide some cash, or a matinee lady who wants to be in show business, or Arab who's got a suitcase full of loot. What would happen if it would flop? I mean, not the countdown would ever flop, no, but you know, what would happen? Yeah, well, you know, we all check a box on the 1040, we go to dinner. Speaking of dinner, how about tonight at 8? Eight? 8 sounds good. Yeah, I'll pick you up then. Oh, you meant with you. While Velda put the screws to Jimmy Norton, Nick put the moves on Gayla Gaston, Linda's understudy. Did you have trouble getting in? No, thanks for meeting me. Don't be crazy. I'd do anything to help Linda. I love her. Really, I thought the understudy always hated the star. Mm, not this understudy. Linda's been great to me. I've learned more from working with her than my three years at Emerson. And you've been here every day, right? Pretty much. Can you think of anyone who'd want to kill Calvin? I couldn't think of anybody who wouldn't want to kill Calvin. He was a real butthead. How so? He couldn't keep his hands to himself. I should have blasted him with pepper spray a dozen times. Huh. So how's the play coming? OK, I guess. I don't know. It's really not that good. It's hard to tell, Nick. Well, Calvin and Linda must have thought it was good. Marty Quine could talk a cripple out of his crutch. That's not very PC. Or original. It's a line I did from a play last year. But it's true. Marty is a charm machine when he wants to be. I worked the backers' audition. I need my What's that? Reading of the play Places they do for the investors. Places, there must have been 60 people there. I've Let's never go. seen so many backers. Marty was brilliant. He sold the show, and he just read the stage directions. There you are. On stage, please. Nick, I have to go. Sorry. Well, can we talk again? You have my number. Let's go. Man, I'm in the wrong racket. Hey, Maya. Hi, Mike. What do you got? I have a tree. Tree? Mm -hmm. Looks like a fish to me. It is, but I call her a tree. Well, whatever. I'm so happy to see you because I need to talk to you about her. Mm -hmm. I hope it's not serious. It is. Oh, boy. If you don't take her, my cat will eat her. So get rid of the cat. Even I did, she'd still be lonely and depressed because you have no different fishes to play with. <gasps> oh. oh, good no, we are stuck. Do something, Mike. Well, I got a tree in my hands. Well, we need a light or something here. Right. You know, we have to get out. Reach in my pocket, I've got okay, a lighter. Okay, where is the bucket? Okay, well, just a moment. Well, Maya, Maya, that's okay. not my lighter. Just... Blossom, you already have three cats. Yeah, but your lease says no pets. Well, I know they're cute. Hey, I gotta go. I'll call you back. Any calls for me? Well, hell, the sister got her fourth cat. Oh, is it hungry? New <laughs> addition to the family. My office. Oh. All right, let's have it. What'd you find out? Well, I found out that I should have been an actor. This gala chick is a serious babe. What'd you find out that's gonna help the case? Well, Calvin Forbes was a lech. There are probably about a thousand women that would like to see him dead. That's old news. Belle, how about you? Well, I hope it did better than him. Norton met Quine years ago in St. Louis in a dinner theater. Now, Norton says he made Quine and he raises all the money. Yeah, Gayla mentioned investors. She went to a backers audition and there were 60 of them. 60? That's a lot of gamblers. Gonna take a big hit to make them pay off their money. Mike, I got the impression Norton doesn't care if they make money or not. Honey, investors always care about making money. No, he said if the play flops, they all take a tax write-off. Then he asked me to dinner. All right, when are you going? Oh, please, with that geek? Not even if you could make me a star. I mean, the man thinks he's some big shot and he has tape on his eyeglasses. What? His eyeglasses are missing a screw. Really? Well, then, dinner is on me. When? I'm starving. As soon as I find a screwdriver. Ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow night on this stage, a new play takes wing. Countdown is T-1. We have written and rehearsed 
and rehearsed and rehearsed. Tonight, we have one last pass at perfection. Tomorrow night, these seats will be filled with 1,600 eager patrons of the theater. Don't disappoint. The hell with the critics. Be true to yourselves. And remember, I love you all. Uh, you in the hat, no smoking in the theater, and this is a closed rehearsal. Oh, what time is it open? I need to see Linda Fortunato. It's all right, Pamela. Mr. Hammer is a friend of the theater. Mike, come to my dressing room. I love you too, Marty. Great speech. Marty's a hell of an actor. He should be on stage. You're not kidding. How do you think you convinced me to sign up for this dog? Plays no good? Oh, it stinks. If I had any brains, I'd shoot myself in the head and save the critics the trouble. Oh, how about a blast? Uh, maybe half a blast. Can't fly on one wing, baby. Oh, I'm impressed. Best actress, Sunrise came early. Yeah, well, it didn't come early enough. It's just another doorstop for my collection. Cheers. Yeah. You know, the last time we were together, I think we were discussing more important things. Refresh my memory, Sparky. Maybe we should pick up where we left off. I'd rather take off where we left on. Mm -hmm. Well, let me slip into something less comfortable but more fun. You are picking. Uh, Linda. <gasps> I always suspected Linda had skeletons in her closet, but this skeleton once again made Linda the suspect. Norton was dead, and Linda was back in the spotlight. How could I have killed Jimmy? I was on stage, you idiot! You have the right to remain silent, and I wish you'd use it. Skip, you're reading from the wrong script. Not now, Mike. Don't worry, Linda. I've called our attorneys. I'll handle this. Don't. What? Mike, do something. Get her out of here. You're in enough trouble already, lady. Oh, ah, get her out! Oh, pain! Pain! Martin Quine's clout with Deputy Mayor Lawrence at City Hall wasn't going to save Linda from a second trip on the murder go round. And while Linda was on her way to the lockup, I patted down a pansy, the late Jimmy Norton. I could never find my keys, but I found Jimmy's, even without my glasses, which reminded me. Jimmy had a screw as loose as the threads of this case. This was a plot twist I hadn't expected. If the screw I found at the crime scene fit Norton's glasses, that would tie Jimmy to Calvin's murder. But then, who killed Jimmy right, Norton? Get over on this stage here. At this stage of the game, I needed to turn to an old friend, Skip Gleason. You better get out of here, Mike. My fuse is lit. You're wrong on this one, Skip. Yeah, well, I'll let a jury decide that out. You see this? Yeah, I have eyes. I want you to dust it. I'm not the cleaning lady. Calvin Forbes' prints are all over that thing. I'll bet you 10 to 1. So? Look at the plate. American Drama Award, Best Actress, Linda Fortune. That's a big deal. I got a room full of boxing trophies. You see that? There's a screw loose. You're telling me. I want you to try this. What are you saying here, Mike? Hey, be careful. Don't smudge it. You have any fingernail clippers? Oh, never mind. I got it. Yeah, it fits. Yeah. Linda's prints were on the murder weapon because that was her trophy. This is Calvin's. Somebody switched the plates. Why? Who? Oh. Who? That was the million-dollar question. But if I've learned anything about the murder racket, it's the why that leads you to the killer. You show me the why, and I'll show you the who. What the hell? Now I had another death on my hands. Maya's tree was dead wood, and I only had one lead to go on. I could cross off drowning as the cause of death, but I knew Maya would cause my death if she found out. Alas, poor tree. I'd deal with Maya later. Right now, I had bigger fish to fry. I would like the public to know that the deputy mayor's office is doing all that it can to find the killer of Calvin Forbes and Jimmy Norton. Today, I lost a great friend. But more importantly, the theater lost one of its greatest benefactors. But despite our pain, as the saying goes, the show 
must go on. The show must go off. This looks like a key to a club. Yeah, the rest of these look like office keys or house keys. These are car keys. BMW, not bad. What about this one, Mike? Let's see. It's hard to say. Numbers are worn down. I can't read it. Uh, Nick, check on my cabinet over there. There's a magnifying glass. Where? Bikini, you would have found it. If he was wearing a bikini, I would have looked harder. It's a safety deposit key. What's a guy like Norton keeping a safe deposit box? Breath mints. With the key to Jimmy Norton's safety deposit box in my pocket, I thought I'd play it safe with Maya and slip her a new fish. I didn't know you liked to paint. I don't, but you do what you have to do. Yeah. What are you doing with my tree? Well, I just took her for a walk. For a walk? Yeah, Maya, I got to give tree back to you. She just does not get along with my fish. Why not? Well, I think my fish are gay. Gay? Mike? Hmm? This is not my tree. How do you know? This is a male. Well, how can you tell the difference? A woman can always tell. Maybe you should put him with your voice. Who knows? Maybe it'll work. With Linda facing arraignment on two counts of first-degree murder, I had to face an ugly reality. Either I'd dig up solid proof she wasn't the killer, or her next audience would be a jury of 12. So I hit Times Square, figuring Norton kept his secrets close at hand. Normally, the bank is after me, but today I was after Norton's bank. I checked out every branch on Broadway with a key in search of a lock. Well, the legwork paid off. I'd found exactly what I was looking for, the financial records for Martin Quine Productions. The bad news was Jimmy Norton was a thief, undoubtedly planning to blackmail Quine. The good news was he was a hell of a bookkeeper. It was all here. Quine's master plan to raise millions for a play that had to flop so he could build the investors. Now everything made sense. Countdown was a countdown to failure. Is that right? I never returned. I got it for the Hearns Hagler fight in 89. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm working. I don't have any beer here. Did you see Mike? I can't see anything because his tie's cutting off the blood to my head. No comment. Hey, hey, heads up. Check it out. Don't you even go there. You're a bad man. <laughs> hey, Mike. Hey, nice tie. Where's your tux? Where's your dress? <laughs> the lights are whacked. Is this gonna happen the whole show? You can dress him up. Let's go, Einstein. Want a drink? No. Come on, Mike. The show's about to start. I threw one back to calm my opening night jitters. Not that I was performing tonight, but I had as much riding on this opening as any of the actors. Most of the theaters I go to have a 10 buck cover charge, watered down beer, and a brass pole with girls named Jaguar and Amber gyrating for tips. But the theater is a magical place where reality is staged and up for grabs. And tonight I was here to grab a killer, a smooth talking ham, the producer, Martin Quine. Backstage, I want you to meet some friends. Be right back. Excuse me. Hey, what's going on? Where the hell's he going? Not even to play the national anthem yet. Places, everybody, places. 
Best of luck to you. I hope it runs for a thousand years. I really... Who's that? Oh, that's the alien. He's wonderful in the show. Gonna be a big star. Hey, catch you at the party afterwards. Sorry. I'll be... Uh, the party is over. Not now. Not now. No, now, Barry. I swear you say one more word. One more word. Barry, I'm gonna have you shot. For once in your pathetic life, we, this we, we have got a killer in here. Is that so? Where is he? You show me the killer. Where is he? Show him to me. Houston, we have a problem. Martin Quine's Countdown was a drama about the first woman to land on the moon. If I had my way, when the final curtain fell, Martin Quine would land in prison. I have no idea what's going on. Deputy Mayor Lawrence was out of character running away from the spotlight, but I stayed in character knowing I only had to hit my marks and say the right lines in the evening's real villain would make his entrance and expose himself in front of a packed house. Boy, do you think this outfit makes me look fat? No, Outer no. space makes you lighter, BJ. That is why they call it weightlessness. Yeah. Hello? Hello? Nobody here. Yes, there is. Hello? Yes, this is she. Yes, sir. Put your hands off me now. I'm ready. Thank you. Well? It's official. I'm going to the moon. Hey, congratulations. Yeah, well, if you're going, I am out of here. Then get out. You're a pathetic shell of a man, a pale imitation. You disgust me. I have had it with your filthy mouth. Shut up! For a drama, this play sure had a lot of punchlines. But the biggest laugh was still to come. The joker I was after was waiting in the wings. Hang on, guys. But Quine was a director as well as a producer, and he directed his goon to give my act a hook. But I had a couple of hooks of my own. A left, and a right. With the showman's flair, Quine finally made his entrance. Ladies and gentlemen, I apologize for all this. Can security come to the stage, please? Ah. <laughs> it's all over, Marty. Or should I say Artie? What are you talking about? I'm talking about your real name, Arthur Hampton. According to your late partner, Jimmy Norton, you use lots of names. Arthur Hampton was the name that sent you to prison for 18 months for fraud. When Jimmy Norton found out about it, he threatened to blackmail you, so you killed him. Just like you killed Calvin Forbes. You're out of your mind, Hammer. Why would I kill the star of my own show? <laughs> For the same reason you framed your co-star. Linda and Calvin had star power. They could get big investors, but they got too many investors. If this show was a hit, you could never repay them. So you got rid of Calvin. You have quite an imagination, Mr. Hammer. You should put it down on paper. It's the makings of a very good play. Thanks, Artie Marty. But you screwed yourself. When you switched Calvin's trophy with Linda's, you had to change the nameplates. Must be tough handling a tiny screw with those heavy gloves on. A nice tale, well told by an idiot. I was with Deputy Mayor Lawrence at a city hall function with 300 witnesses. Will somebody get this man off my set? Hey, function that started at 9 o'clock. My acting debut seven. had gone to my head, and Quine had gone back into the shadows of the wings. Unmasked, his illusion revealed for the fraud it was. The denouement would be a private performance performed by a two-man cast. Quine had climbed the ladder of success on deception, intrigue, and death. But what goes up must come down. Martin Quine was headed for a fall. Night, sweet prince. Say goodnight, Marty.
thumbs up. Countdown flopped on Broadway, and Linda and I flopped in the bed. The curtain wasn't the only thing to rise. Reviews are in. How bad are they? It raves. Really? Mike Hammer is sensational, memorable. Mike Hammer will run forever. You said that in the Times? Yeah, that's my personal review. Because he can. Can I have an encore? How about a command performance? Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh. Mike, Skip! I'll get rid of him. What? Just don't answer the door. Right. Don't answer the door. Okay. Go ahead. Don't, don't. It'll just take me a second. Well, good morning, your horniness. <laughs> Hope I didn't wake you. Very funny. For me, you shouldn't have. No, no, I came to apologize to you. Linda, I'm really sorry. I should sue you. Well, good luck. I haven't got anything. That's what they all say, darling. Show folk. I don't get her. Well, if you don't get out of here, neither will I. Bye-bye. Bye. Pause, darling. Yes, as a matter of fact. Holy Toledo. No. But, no. Oh, forget it. They say there's a broken heart for every light on Broadway. Linda not only broke hearts, she broke box office records and shops. But she was quite a woman, a star on stage and off. And in the bedroom, well, let's just say I was stage struck. <laughs>